Delay no further. Brief aside, this annoys me a little bit. I don't think that that's the right expression for this situation, but I can't think of a better one. Classic nemesis behavior. I don't actually think it's that hard. So you remember how last month I fell super behind on things and then that's why I ended up having to do like a combined video of my wrap up and TBR? Well, we're doing that again because I'm behind again. Oops. Uh, I meant to have the TBR up like on the first or before the first and then that did not happen. So anyway, here we are. We're doing it. Same information will be provided, just not in two separate videos. Got my wrap up and my TBR and we'll do first the wrap up and then the TBR. That is to say my July wrap up, and my August TBR. I have a couple books in my August, nope, got a couple books in my July TBR. Or, okay, I got a couple books in my July wrap up that I started but have not finished yet and those are also then they are carried over into August because I need to slash want to finish them. Um, so yeah. Let us delay no further. So the first book that I read in July was Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. And a bunch of people were surprised to see it on my TBR and then were speculating that I would hate it. And I really liked it. Actually, when I ordered it too, because I was like um, complaining to my, I think I might have said in the video, in my TBR video, I might have complained. I feel certain that I did about like the, the odyssey of like getting the hard the UK hardcover. And I like complained about all this to my patrons as it was happening. And they were like, we don't really even think you're gonna like this book. <laughs> so you've gone to all that trouble for a book that you probably won't like. Well, joke's on you. I really, really liked it. I'm trying to, it was at the beginning of the month. I'm trying to remember now if I gave this five stars, I think I might've done. But it was like um, the same way that I gave five stars to like Skyward and some other things where it was like, oh, I can't think of a reason not to. So five. <laughs> it wasn't that I was just like, oh, amazing like best book I've read this year or something like that I was just like yeah I that was good that was good I have no complaints it would seem peevish to give it a four so sure five stars after all that I'll go look and I actually didn't give it five if I didn't then I considered it but I think I did give it five anyway I, sw I feel like I'm pretty good at like um explaining what it is that I do and do not like about books to the point where people are like look you can just like what you like you don't have to like explain it so much and so like I'm, I don't know. I think it's, I mean, it's like a running joke and I participate in, in the perpetuation of this joke. Um, my reading taste is unpredictable. You, you're never gonna, you never know if Elena's gonna like it or hate it. But like, honestly, like, okay, brief aside, this annoys me a little bit, like to be perfectly honest, because I feel like I, more than many, more than most, more than average, go out of my way to like for myself and others explain what it is that I do and do not like in a book, what it is that I look for, what it is that will bother me. like where I really, really try to explain it, both so that I know and so that people who are looking at my reviews will know. So like for people to be like, oh, you never know what Lena's gonna think. Like to some degree, like I get why like on the surface it might seem that way. If you're like just looking at broad trends in reading, you're like, well, she tends to like books in this genre. So what a surprise. She liked a book that's like way not in that genre. But like, if you actually like listen to what I have to say about what it is that I do and do, do and do not like in books, I don't actually think it's that hard to know if I'm going to like a book. So anyway, carry on joking about not knowing if I'm going to like a book, whatever. It's fine. I don't actually care that much. I mean, obviously I care a little bit because <laughs> I just felt like time complaining about it. But anyway, I don't know why people are that surprised that I like this book. What I... Why would, why wouldn't I like this book? I don't understand why, why people would think that I would super hate this book or that it would be like not my cup of tea. It's just because I'm often really critical of sci-fi. It's not because I dislike sci-fi, it's because a lot of sci-fi is like not up to my personal standard. Not, this doesn't mean it's not up to like a universal standard, but I've made pretty clear what my standards are for sci-fi. And there's, Mickey Seven is, is, perfectly fine for my for everything that I've ever said about sci-fi about what I look for in sci-fi so yeah but this this reminded me of the movie Moon with Sam Rockwell this reminded me of surprisingly the prestige the the movie more than the book the, the Christopher Nolan movie two movies that I really really love this was a little bit more I don't really think lighthearted is the right word because this book isn't like when I think lighthearted I think like carry on by Rainbow Rowell like you know like it's like silliness. This book is not silliness. Skyward actually, even though it has some like more dramatic things, I would say it's more like lighthearted even. Mickey Seven is more sardonic, I suppose I would say. So like Moon is a pretty harrowing movie to watch. Um, 
and it gets more harrowing <laughs> the longer it goes. That being said, Sam Rockwell, I would be very pleased to have him play the, the eponymous character if this were ever to be made into a motion. Actually, I think it's going to be made into a motion picture. I, not on this cover, but I feel like I've seen a cover of this book that says soon to be a major motion picture. So like, I'm guessing Sam Rockwell's not in it. Maybe he is. So like this book has a fairly simple premise, a fairly well explained premise, a premise that doesn't go too much into any kind of like mumbo jumbo science that's fake anyway. And then the premise that it sets up, it explores like the human question of that premise and not in like a moralizing grand meaning kind of way, if that makes sense. Like it, it deals with meaning of life, meaning of like personal journeys and identities and purpose and memory as identity and all these kinds of things that sci-fi very frequently um, those are questions that sci-fi likes to explore. And I think it handles them in a way that instead of being sort of like grandiose about it or prescriptive about it, it's very, it's very human. And it, there is humor in it. So that's why like, uh, I think this book is kind of regarded as being light, more lighthearted, but it's, it's like a uh, gallows humor. And I think gallows humor suits sci-fi very well, or at least the kind of sci-fi that I like. Because when you're dealing with like, the enormity of the universe or the enormity of like the implications, like the philosophical implications of like certain um, sci-fi premises. There's kind of like no way to retain your sanity if you don't approach that with a certain degree of gallows humor. And that's kind of what you get in Mickey 7. And I think it was handled really, really well in a way that was um, engaging, entertaining, at times amusing, also like kind of horrifying and thought provoking. And I just thought it was pretty fantastic, honestly. Like not the best sci-fi I've ever read in my life. I feel like I've probably made it sound like it's a little bit better than it is. But I just think like everything that it set out to do, it did quite well. And in a way that I had like zero issues with. So yeah, yeah, I really, really liked this. And as you'll soon see, the sequel is on uh, my August TBR. And I've heard that it's not as good as this one. But you know, people thought that I would hate this one. And a lot of people also in general do not like this book. So that'll be the next surprise that I, that I end up thinking the sequel is even better. So yeah, I really like Mickey 7 and I recommend it. Next up is Manslaughter Park by Terza Price. This is the third in the series of Jane Austen inspired murder mysteries by the same author. This one, I don't know, I was gonna like say my like ranking, I guess, like if I compared the others were Pride and Premeditation and Sense and Second Degree Murder. I don't know which one I would say I like the best. I mean, I did say that I think I liked like, uh, Sense and Second Degree Murder better than the first one, partially because I just like Sense and Sensibility, like that's my favorite Austin. Um, and Manslaughter Park is obviously based on Mansfield Park. I don't think the mystery of Mansfield Park is that good, or I'm sorry, of Manslaughter Park is that good. Like the, I think the mystery element in this one was the weakest of the three. But the thing, like the twist that it had on the Jane Austen story itself was probably my favorite. Um, and it in fact, like, I had been thinking to myself that I wish that a book would do this, and before I'd like properly gotten into this one, I was like, I know this one won't do that. But you know, it got me thinking, I was like, someone should do that. And then it did do that. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. You have done the thing. Um, no, no one, you know, can take down the like book wanted ads. Like we actually, we got it guys. Like actually we got it covered. I don't want to say what it is because it's a bit spoilery, but it is um kind of like a fan fictioning of, I mean, all of these, I guess are fan fictionings, but like certain characters and their relationships in the original Mansfield Park. It's, it's, um, Definitely like a fan fictioning of like some of that, which is like, I, I was like, oh, I'm so pleased to see this. And I think it did that quite well. So yeah, the mystery part, not so great. And so if that's your primary reason for picking this up, but the, if you're interested in like a twist on the like general character situation of Mansfield Park, then I do recommend this. Next was my book of the month club book um, from, this was not, I didn't have a book of the month club book. That is to say, I didn't like I skipped the previous month, so I didn't have one for the month, but I had gotten this last year and whatever month I was supposed to read it in, I didn't get around to it. It was probably October because in October I'm notorious for my like massive spooky season TBRs. And I want to say that I'm mad that I didn't get around to reading it then, but I'm honestly, I think it's for the best because I think this was the right time for it when I wasn't like rushed, like when I'm in the midst of like 50 other books or like whatever. So. I am mad that I considered getting rid of this without even reading it. I put it on my TBR when I didn't have a book of the month club book because I was like, well, if I don't read it now, I'll never read it. And like at this point, like, I mean, I've had it and I haven't read it. Like, should I just get rid of it? Should I just be like, ah, you're not gonna read it. So I'll just give up. And who like dodged a bullet there. I don't think that that's the right expression for this situation, but I can't think of a better one. Crisis averted, possibly still not quite it because I loved this book. Oh my god. <laughs> like I was gushing about it in my discord and I convinced one of my patrons, like I wasn't trying to, but like my gushing convinced one of my patrons. Um, this particular book um, is like still like, it's like hard to get slash expensive because it is this author's newest. But I guess a bunch of this author's other books, like her backlist, 
was like easily accessible or cheaply accessible. So my patron read, I think at least one, maybe two, but I think one um, of this author's backlist books. And I like, before I was even finished with it, had gone and like ordered several of the author's backlist books. I loved this. This was the, a better time for it, I think, than Halloween time. I remember, I think it was around Halloween time that I was supposed to read this originally. And I was like, oh, it's like magical realism. And like, it might be like a mysterious kind of like ghosty book. And like, that is all actually quite true about it. But I did feel like it was more of a summertime vibe. I think it does take place in summer. Yes, it definitely takes place in summer. And it's like on an island. So they're like near the water. And it's it's more like summer beach house kind of like vibe, tone, aesthetic. So definitely more appropriate for reading in July. And like, it was honestly like the perfect ambiance. Like it was, you know, my windows open and the sun setting after, you know, I finished work or on the weekend, put on like a beachy ambiance on my TV. In the beginning of the book, they talked about how like this town and this small island was famous for its marshmallow candy because it like marshmallow was growing on this, on this island. And so then like, they like made a good like trade in like marshmallow candy so that like all these like storefronts that are like tourist attractions like they all are making marshmallow things so like the smell of marshmallow is like everywhere and I remembered that I had a lavender and marshmallow candle that I'd never lit and had been like saving for a rainy day so I lit the candle so I had this like marshmallowy smell and like ocean waves and the sun setting and this book it is like a magical realism mystery ghost story human lit fic thing and it was just so engrossing and so beautiful and so atmospheric and I found it like charming and and also kind of alarming and and there was like a, a small like thriller element to it and by the end I cried <laughs> it was just out uh, five stars no like unlike my Mickey seven five stars where I was like can't think of reason not to so five stars this was like five stars you earned every single one I'm reading this author's backlist yeah I almost didn't read this and it ended up being like one of the best book of the month club books I've ever gotten wouldn't have read it without book of the month so like this is why I remain subscribed to book of the month because like for all of the garbage that I go through and I hate most of it I would never have read this if not for book of the month so yeah, love this. And if any of what I described sounds good to you, then read it. And yeah, so good. Like a, one of my favorites of the year, probably. Like, ah, oh, just, ah, oh, so good. Next up is uh, some, a couple of rereads. Dark Age by Pierce Brown. I was supposed to read this in June, but I knew our live show was going to be in July. So I just pushed it off until July. Um, so this is a reread. This is my third time reading it. The live show for it was on my channel. I think that's the last thing that I have up on my channel since I didn't have a video. Whoops. So if you missed it, go check it out. The You still have time to enter the giveaway as well if you're interested in some giveaway items. You know, I don't know why people wouldn't be interested in free stuff. And yeah, this is a brutal read. Brutal every time. It's actually more brutal rereading it because then you know what's about to happen. And then instead of just freaking out at the thing happening, you preemptively begin to freak out because you know what's about to happen. So then the people period of time that you are freaking out is longer. <laughs> but it's still, it's really, really excellent. And I'm really, really looking forward to reading Lightbringer, which is in my TBR. Then for the Witcher Read Along on Chapter 3 podcast, we read Tower of Swallows. Um, I liked it better the second time. I still think it has the same, I, the same, the problems that I had with it the first time, those are still there. But like I, one, I knew like going into it to expect them. And two, they weren't quite as bad as I remembered. And three, the things I went in interested to like look for and to like engage with. Um, kept me more interested than they weren't things that I was like thinking about the first time I read it. So I definitely enjoyed it more the second time, but I do think it's weaker than the previous installments. We had a good conversation about it on Chapter 3 Podcast. If you missed it, then go check it out. And yeah, this is this remains the best cover of them all. So I'm pleased that I like the book better because I love this cover. Next up, I have The Cask by Freeman Willis Crofts. This was the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club pick. Uh, we Our live show for it was on Mars Channel, where we all dressed up as detectives in whatever way we decided to interpret that, which was fun, as always, to do the dressing up. And I actually liked this book the best out of all of us. It wasn't, like, massively more. Um, I liked it, like, my rating was the highest by a half star. So it wasn't, like, I loved it and everyone hated it. But I did have the highest rating. And we did have somebody that hated it and it wasn't me. So like, I guess this was just like a very positive month for me. Mickey Seven, who people 
thought I would hate it, loved it. Other birds that I almost got rid of because I was like, I'm, am I gonna read this? Would I, I probably will hate it, loved it. Tower of Swallows that I didn't like that much the first time, liked it better the second time. This one liked it best out of all of us. So like, you know what? Maybe I've turned over a new leaf and this is now my new like five star strumpet era. I did not give this five stars, but I did, I enjoyed it. I was also in the middle of my Poirot rewatching, which is a, an annual occurrence. So it was a good time to be reading this for me personally. So I wouldn't say it's like amazing or anything, but like for what it is, I think it's pretty good. I, I'm still in love with like the aesthetic of this like edition. Makes me want to collect them all. But yeah, so go check out our live show if you missed it. It was a good time. Next is a carryover from previous month. Actually from, is it a carryover from May? I feel like, I'm not sure. This was a book that I was supposed to read for a local book club, but then I wasn't able to attend either of the meetings for it. And now I haven't been able to attend any meetings because they keep being scheduled on days that I have other things to do. So I've like quiet quit the book club without even really meaning to because I had every intention of, of reading this book and, and going to the book club to talk about it, but then I just couldn't. <laughs> so anyway, the book in question is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. This was my first Vonnegut. And I really enjoyed it. I gave this four stars, not five. And I felt about it kind of similarly to how I feel about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They are quite different books. I do not in any way mean to suggest they are read-alikes, but in the way that like, um, actually I feel this way sometimes reading Pratchett as well, where like the kind of like quippy, strange humor of it, of the, like, not just of like a character or something, but of like the tone of the entire book is kind of this like, this absurdist kind of humorous thing it means that I can't really connect with it, like on an emotional level. So like, I'm only really able to engage with, with Hitchhiker's Guide, with this, with a lot of Pratchett on a purely like intellectual level where I appreciate what it's doing and I find it amusing and I find it clever and I, I find it thought provoking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not something where like, I can emotionally engage with the characters of the story. Like the sto the characters aren't really characters so much as they are like vehicles through which to like explore this kind of like scenario, which is like, interesting or absurd or humorous or whatever it is. I really, really appreciated this book, but it wasn't one that I could like, I didn't really connect with it because it's not really the type of story that I feel like that you can. And for me personally, that's kind of like what has to be there for it to be the full five stars, right? Because I ideally feel both intellectually and emotionally stimulated by something. That's like, that's when you've like reached five star level because you've done it all. So a book could be like a purely like emotional read, but it's like technically not that good. So then again, it'll be like, you know, a four stars or something, or it's like intellectually really stimulating, but there's like, it's devoid of any kind of emotional connection. And I can't really feel like giving it five stars then. So I did really enjoy it. It does make me want to read more Vonnegut, but it was just missing that for me. But I, I really, really liked this. Very pleased to have to have read this. The era of positivity, however, comes to an abrupt halt with the book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them, which I did. And that was A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Um, one of my patrons all said, actually, we think she might hate it, even though this was a book that I had previously purchased for myself thinking I might be interested in it, um, and then hadn't read it. I thought, and I think they thought when they said that, was that I would just find it boring. That I was like, at, you know, best case, I ended up actually loving it. Worst case, I'll think it's mid, I'll think it's boring. And I did think it was boring, but I had a lot more issues with it than that. I quite hated this book. So it being boring was kind of like the best thing that I can say about it. Nope, this was, this was a rant. So uh, shan't be continuing this series. Uh, next up is a book that I just like, uh, my friend gave me this um, proof that, or this arc that she had of it a while ago. And I had requested it, um, the audio for it from the library and my, my library hold was about to expire. And I was like, ah, read it real quick because it's not very long. Um, that is The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. I don't know if that's how you say the author's name. And I really, really enjoyed this. I actually, um, as I was finishing this, I went and ordered the other books. Um, I think the third book is coming out around October time, but I ordered the second book. Um, and I think I'll probably read it around October because this is a good like October time read. I think if you like Skullduggery Pleasant, if you like mainly that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if you like Skullduggery Pleasant, if you like um, the little bit that I know of what Lockwood & Co is like, I haven't actually read that, but I think that, if I'm correct about what I think I know about it, um, or um, way back in the day I read The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, or um, this is a much, 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 much better version, but it's kind of similar in like tone and vibe to The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, which I quite hated. This was like a good version of that. So there's like, um, ghosts and magic and uh, like a youngish protagonist um, who's kind of living rough and is 
working with like go oh you know this also this also like is a much much better version of the bone season which i originally thought that i liked the bone season mainly because it was kind of baffling and i was like well it's really complicated so it must be brilliant and then i reread the bone season and i was like no this is this is actually really really bad and i hate it this is like i think a much better version of that like it's not exactly like the bone season but it's kind of reminiscent of the bone season because it's got this like post-apocalyptic vibe we're dealing with kind of like ghosty necromantic kind of like things the main character is kind of like street smart and is able to get by because of her like abilities slash awareness but gets kind of involved in like a bigger organization than what she was previously involved with so it's got some like bone season things in it but i just think it's much better this also takes place in scotland not ireland pretty sure it's scotland yes yeah, scotland so yeah it's just not like amazing or anything i think i gave it four stars but it was like around 3.5 rounded up to four but it was enough for me to want to continue reading the series and i think that the vibes are really good the humor is pretty good um i just think it's like a good time and I would recommend it. Next up is the last book that I finished in July um, and that is the third and final book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy which my patrons and I were buddy reading together. We haven't had our live chat for it yet we are about to and yeah Dreams of Gods and Monsters. This I thought the first time that I read the series was the weakest. I still thought it was the weakest but not for the reason that I thought that I thought that. Um, I cited the pacing and I guess it technically is still the pacing but I kept blaming the pacing issues with this one on the fact that like that a third perspective a third plot line is kind of like introduced and woven in and it's like that's like dragging down the pacing. This time around I was like actually that's not what's dragging the pacing down. That part is actually like pretty good and pretty interesting and pretty important. It's more that like the book's like main conflict is kind of resolved and then it keeps going <laughs> and going and then we still haven't resolved anything and then we get to an epilogue and you're like is the epilogue now gonna wrap up the rest of this because that's a lot for an epilogue to do so like yes the pacing is still the, a problem but it's not because of the new perspective and new characters so i like a lot of things that the series does and a lot of things that the conclusion accomplishes the pacing is it's not great so anyway, i'm looking forward to chatting about it with my patrons Having them all break my hearts when they complain about it and tell me it's garbage. They're wrong, but they will say that. And then the last two are books that I've started but have not finished yet, but I do, I will finish them. That is House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig and Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Both are rereads. This because the sequel is on my TBR for the next month, so gotta finish this before I read the other one. Um, I mean, I don't have to. I've read this before, but I'd like to. It's been a, it's been a minute and I am enjoying it. And then Hyperion, we are reading together on my Patreon now that, that we are done with um, Book of the New Sun we are reading the Hyperion Cantos just like as a second buddy read <laughs> uh, because I, 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 there's not really much of a reason. But anyway, so yeah, um, we are going to chat about Hyperion soon as well because we were supposed to read it in July and I haven't finished it yet, but I'll finish it before the chat. I, I will. I read this before and I, I really enjoyed it the first time. So I'm hoping I enjoyed the second time as well. And then my TBR, some of which I've already referenced, um, we're we're also doing another read along. Okay, so like I have my official buddy read each month with my patrons that like they all vote on and then with Book of the New Sun we just kind of like did that and then now that we were done doing that we kind of created this like second slot of like togetherness and we've been just kind of randomly filling it and we've we are now filling it with both the high period cantos but every other month and then on the off months where we're not reading the high period cantos we are now going to be reading all of the Hornblower books <laughs> by C.S. Forrester. I've watched the Hornblower like adaptations, the a &E ones, many, many times. I have the box set, but I haven't read the books. And I did one of our like, uh, one of the times that like the, the Book of the New Sun slot was no longer filled by Book of the New Sun. Um, we did like a watch party to watch the first episode of Hornblower, which like wet the appetites as I intended. <laughs> so yeah, now we're going to read the books. And yeah, I'm quite excited about that because like I said, I've, I've watched the show many, many times. Not as many as times as I've watched Poirot, but still many, many times. And yeah, I'd like to read. I mean, I'm, I'm going to. But yeah, I'm excited to read the books that they're based on. In July, we read Hyperion, and we'll talk about it. So then August, we're reading Midshipman Hornblower. And then September, we're back to Hyperion. And then October, it's more Hornblower. And then November, etc., etc. But this isn't the official buddy read. This is just in addition to, <laughs> I don't know. Apparently I have all the time in the world. Uh, then I have the book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them. So they are not in any way obligated to read it. I think a lot of them have already read it and those who have read it are not happy that this has been chosen for me. So I don't know who voted for this, 
but somebody voted for this. I guess they chose violence. And that is The Vanished Birds by uh, Simon Jimenez. I know nothing really about this except that I, th I think it has sci-fi elements. Yeah, I think that's literally all I know. I really don't know anything about this. And the cover is not really much to go off of. Yeah, I'm, I guess I also know that a lot of people think I'm gonna hate it. Which, you know, challenge accepted. I mean, going in with that expectation could be of great benefit, you know, because it makes the expectation really low and it doesn't have to do too much to exceed that expectation, so. Here's hoping I don't hate it, but I'm going in prepared to hate it. Then for the year of gaming, and I'm super, super behind on my gaming videos, but they are coming, I promise, 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 is Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I love Graveyard Books so much. Oh yeah, Fragile Things, fuck. I am gonna vlog Fragile Things, which is why that hasn't happened yet, because I haven't had time. But anyway, Graveyard Book is next. And yeah, this will be my third time reading it. I might read the graphic novel, which I also have, or both. I don't know. But yeah, I love the graveyard book. Kind of wish it had like fallen in October, but it didn't. And it's fine. One of my favorites, my favorite Neil Gaiman books are Ocean at the End of the Lane and Graveyard Book, if we don't count The View from the Cheap Seas. My favorite fiction books then are Ocean at the End of the Lane and The Graveyard Book, so pretty, pretty excited. Then the Witcher read-along continues with The Lady of the Lake, which concludes the, like the Witcher, the main Witcher series. Then we're gonna take a break. And then um, after taking our month long break, then we'll come back and read Season of Storms, which will be my first time reading it. But no, we're on Lady of the Lake in August. This was my least favorite by far in the series the first time through. But since my opinion of Tower of Swallows improved the second go around, I'm very hopeful that my opinion of Lady of the Lake will improve in the second go around. But we shall find out together when we chat about it on Chapter 3 Podcast. Then my Book of the Month Club books, which like, maybe there'll be more other birds situations, but that's doubtful. One of them I chose knowing that I'll probably hate it. And that is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. I tried a Chloe Gong book from Book of the Month Club. It was her like YA Romeo and Juliet retelling. These Violent Delights? I DNF'd it. Did not like it. This is also a Shakespeare retelling, but this is, I believe, adult, not YA. And it's a retelling of, what's a re it's a retelling of Antony and Cleopatra. So, and you know, I'll probably hate it, but um, my uh, Shakespeare reading friend Heather has also picked it up for the same reason, and then we can hate it together. <laughs> and then I also got um, The Only One Left by Riley Sager because it's a thriller. I like getting thrillers from Book of the Month Club because even if I don't like them, they're usually at least entertaining. And I really like this cover. And it's an isolated closed circle mystery. Those are so irresistible. I really like this cover. It's it's definitely giving and then there were none vibes, which I, I love that book. So here's hoping this is a good one. Then the actual buddy read that we voted on and we're gonna chat about for my patrons and I is Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. And my nemesis, Alan, shall be joining us for the live chat about this book. Um, He's convinced I will hate it. And the reason he thinks I will hate it is because he loves it, which, you know, fair enough. I hope I love it, if for no other reason than because this, this plumed hat, I adore it. And I want to like a book that has that on its cover. I am, I've had this book for a long, 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 long time. I actually originally asked Alan if he'd like to buddy read it. He said yes, and then he read it without me. Classic nemesis behavior. So anyway, finally reading it, and I will get to talk to Alan about it. So hopefully I do, like, it does, it is blurred by Brandon Sanderson, so... That doesn't bode well, but you know, I'm still excited to read it. And because of the aforementioned love for Sarah Addison Allen, who wrote Other Birds, then my I, myself and then my patron who has also now become enamored of this author, um, we're gonna read Lost Lake by Sarah Addison Allen. I also purchased, and the book that my patron had read um, from her backlist, Ma Magic Spells? Is that what it's called? I don't know. But I've heard like review, I think it's about for that book, not for this one, it's about one of the two that people say is kind of like practical magic except good and I hated practical magic but I liked the kind of vibe practical magic was supposed to evoke. So a good book that does that, yay for that. So I'm quite excited to read more from Sarah Addison Allen. If this is anywhere near as good as other birds I'm in for such a treat. And also this cover is very very nice. Much better than the other birds cover. The other birds cover is like so boring. Anyway, so yeah. Excited about this. Then as I mentioned before, the sequel to Mickey 7, Antimatter Blues. Oh yeah, Mickey 7, soon to be a major motion picture, is on the cover of the sequel and it's an unremovable sticker. We love to see it. <laughs> anyway, um, I am excited to read this because I really, really liked Mickey 7. And I hope that this will be, if not as good, at least, you know, also good. Then as previously mentioned, um, I'm rereading House of Salt and Sorrows because just released was the sequel, House of Roots and Ruin. And I have the stunning Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, which I haven't even looked at this yet. 
I mean, I knew it would look like this because I've seen promotion for it online in the weeks and months leading up. But the end pages, and then, and then, what the fuck? I'm very confused. I need to figure out what edition has the amazing naked cover because it's not this one apparently. I feel betrayed, but it does have really nice sprayed pages. So I'm gonna, gonna go do some Googling because I want that naked cover. That was an unexciting, very disappointing reveal. No, it wasn't even a reveal. And then last but certainly not least is Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. The live show for this will be on Angela's channel. Date is TBD, but we're thinking like around about Labor Day weekend. And yeah. It's here guys, it's finally here. I haven't started reading it yet. I am going to see Pierce Brown in a few days. So I don't know if I'll finish it before I see him, but I hope to start it before then in case it sparks any queries and this will be my opportunity to ask him. Those are all the books that I read and will be reading. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about the books that I've just shared. If you like them, hate them, want to read them, don't want to read them, whatever you want to let me know. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays, other random times well on Saturdays, so like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. <laughs>